risky decision that was probably unwarranted. So for game four, guys, we are headed to Battlefield of Eternity. Be the map pick here of Gluck on match point. Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to... May actually... Hanzo may be banned here. His damage onto Immortal is actually insane. Like, I think so much quicker than even Martel in a way. So I think maybe Ben, we may, this may be the first one we see Vala coming up from these two teams. Let's see where they try to contest. There, we have a lot of, lots of heroes actually doing so much damage onto Immortals like Hanzo, Artanis, Vala, Mar Martel now. So I think they, they will be high contesting. They'll be highly contesting on the top of the draft. Yeah. Balthail, just so fantastic with the Tyrael. I mean, he's good on this map. He's a strong soul laner. I don't think he's going to draw first ban, but he certainly could be picked up if they have another Tyrael draft planned. I think we might see oh, so uh, this be the first map where Abathur isn't banned first location as well. Also, Samuro is okay Samuro is pretty okay here. Vala is pretty okay here. <laughs> don't don't listen to G-Clef Hero Leaguers. Um, and don't don't draft Hanzo every game, even though he's really strong. If you're good at Hanzo, pick him. Like, if you're actually a Hanzo main, pick him. If you're like, I heard Hanzo's pretty good, don't try to become a Hanzo main if you're not a Hanzo main. Yeah, but too late. No, it's never too late, but, uh, you know, uh, have some doubts in yourself. Go in play your some quick match, yes. okay? Before. Get Hanzo to AI, level 20 before make you... Make sure you do AI at least once, <laughs> and then quick match, and then please. Uh, get Hanzo to level 20 before you pick him in Hero League. We'll 20? talk. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. That's the Hanzo main now. So we're getting into this game in just a second, guys, as we uh, have the players jumping into the lobby. So a pretty intense second game, so players got to wipe the sweat off their hands, get the hands warm with the heat packs that the mm -hmm. Korean players have always used since the early days of Korean esports. It's winter. It's January. It's one degree Celsius outside. It's actually not that cold. Yeah, it's been pretty warm these past few days. I know maybe if you live in a warmer climate, you might think one degree Celsius sounds pretty cold, but actually it's a really nice warm day for us if here. If you're Seoul. from US, you think one. How cold is one degree Celsius? It's, it's like, like 33 F. Yeah, 33, 34 maybe. Well, Abathur gets banned 100%, so no variety here. Genji goes oh, out man. as well. Surprise, Hanzo. I don't like a Hanzo first pick here for Feliz. I know that he obviously provides a lot of auto attack damage, but you know what? I like this a lot more. Which means we might get to see for the first time Gluck's Hanzo. Surprise! So Hanzo gets picked up. And who joins him is left, uh, you know, left to be unknown oh, at the yeah. moment. Lucio, I think, is, yeah, is a good pick because... Mm -hmm. Allows you to fight any team fight with a sound barrier. Rotational play not as important on this map, but maybe Lucio's just... been—he's got such a high win rate right now yeah. that uh, I mean, you ask Caldor about that, but uh, he's got such a high <laughs> win rate right now. In scrims, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's got such a high win rate right now that he's—he's uh, he's basically a must pick if you can. And given there's no greater pick, I think at the moment, and they want to respond to Feliz's first time drafting Grey Main, mm -hmm. he's the strongest pick here. I think Overload uh, previously, uh, Sand will be likely to be the one because he was playing lots of mages, uh, poking skill shots. I think that makes sense for him to play Hanzo from the back, back line. Also taking Leeming. Okay, Feliz, I think they're taking a, more of a standard way here. A lot more of a standard HCC Korean picks coming out. Grey main Leeming. Scary thing about drafting two DPS early, though, is you can find yourself choked out of other pools. Because now, okay, I'm glad they grabbed Muradin, because I was like, if you don't grab Muradin, Gluck grabs it, bans the ETC, and you'll have a strong solo tank. This is pre-Blaze. Uh, it's more on the Blaze patch, but Blaze is uh, not available for play. Next He's weekend. Locked. Yeah, he'll be available next week, so... Could have found themselves Warrior Choked if they grabbed a support there, but chose the safer path. Ooh, I think... Do you actually ban Tyrio even though you take you, you took Greymane already? I think that's exactly what they're thinking. Yeah, I, I actually don't like the Tyrio ban. I think that Lucio serves Tyrio's purpose well enough in team fights. Yes, for exactly. What, for what we're looking at here, this is a bossless map, for example. If you actually uh, give Tyrio, you, they can actually, of course, they if they do it perfectly, they don't have to. But oftentimes, the sound barrier and the and sanctification comes at the per, at, they at come the same down time, together. Yeah, if you make a mistake, they, uh, they and then they waste it. I think. They could have actually let them take Tyrael in that way. But I, I think that Gluck simply would not have drafted the Tyrael, even if left available. Yeah, that's true. 
their drafting tonight has been fantastic, and I don't think that Tyrael lends itself well to working with Hanzo or Lucio um, and any other heroes they will likely pick going forward. The question is, what will be the second DPS? Uh, Arthas is a possible pick here, but with a the Leeming there, I think less likely. Okay, will be Garrosh as their main tank, first time in the tournament. There will be lots of, somewhat of a poking, and lots of auto, auto attack damage coming from the other side. So they will try to tank some damage with Garrosh, having that armor, and Lucy always having the sustain also. Works pretty well with Garrosh when he's low on HP, actually. Lu Lucio can heal, heal him up all the time. And let's be real, OJ's aggressive dwarf toss is... He's very aggressive yeah. as a Muradin. I think like he might actually be the one who gets grabbed and tossed by Garrosh in some of these team fights if he continues to use dwarf toss of course, offensively. It's a little bit harder with the, Q with the ground baker change. Sure. It does uh, provide slow now. It doesn't pull you in to Garrosh anymore. That's a, it's a slow little mini stun there, but if uh, Garrosh is in melee range, basically when the Dwarf Toss comes through, can be a disaster. So question being now, who is the support? I think grabbing a Rhaegar here is the safest play. Mm -hmm. Uther is strong, but you're going to get out sustained by Lucio in the fights. Okay, so they will grab the Rhaegar. To provide any healing that needed, even Warden or Arthas in the so front line. They're having a very tanky... Fr I, I was actually thinking maybe even a double support uh, like an Alex Straja coming in. I think anything that... Sure, I mean, I think that could have worked, but it leaves them with a lack of solo support... Or sorry, uh, solo laner, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, they just need another good wave clear hero. This is going to be Vala's first appearance. Best map for Vala with her Q build. She's got solid wave clear in the four man. They have a strong solo laner with Sonya. And again, I think Gluck wins this draft pretty hard. Standard draft coming out from Feliz, and they can utilize it quite well. They have good wave clear themselves with Rhaegar uh, in the mix with Greymane too. Greymane can cap very quickly, so they can look to potentially steal some of those uh, Impaler caps. But liking the draft style of Gluck better, it feels like they're always one step ahead. Yep, I think they, I think I also, I also believe Gluck actually took this draft not as hard as the other maps, but still, as when we talk about the Immoral, the, all the rotation, of course, it's a two-lane map, but still, rotation in work. They don't have a global, but I think they can just have, they have all the right tools to do so. Yeah. Leeming is going to be great for Poke. Greymane is going to be decent for Poke on the Immortals, but with Hanzo and Vala, it's going to be rough. They're going to probably have to invade a few times, be a little bit more aggressive. So... See if it does pan out well for them as we head into potentially our last map of this first series. And we'll see if Gluck's mastery of Hanzo is there. He's holding his level one talent, not necessarily going into the scatter arrow on this map. As camp clear, uh, not as important. He may actually think uh, Kuvala is enough for that immortal. If they're going all the way in poking, yeah, well, he might Hanzo actually go for attack speed instead. Hanzo can also go for a uh, Storm Arrow. That's also a viable talent, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of... I mean, he has actually all of his talents are viable. It's going to go for... Uh, I think it's called Redemption. The auto attack. So every time he auto attacks a hero twice, um, it increases his attack speed. and can do it up to, I believe, 12 times. And then it's really fast attack speed, which if he maxes it, he's incredibly strong on the Immortals because oh, he man. just has high attack speed. I no, like this build instead. No more simple geometry. I hated geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Geometry is one of my favorite math Geometry subjects. Geometry is not math. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different math. It was it, it was technically math in my high school, and it was easy, so I liked it personally. Oh, you're good at geometry. That's why you're. Where good. are you going? That's to why you're Hanzo main. Yeah. Well, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> you said yes first. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You go into trigonometry gets a little bit harder, but Hanzo's just at the geometry level. Okay, that was a cool uh, dodge there by OJ predicting Milky Way's uh, groundbreaker there. Respecting the Hanzo pick as well, not getting poked down. Of course, with Vala and also Hanzo going for the super early camp. I like this choice, actually. At least not really using the Green Man as a tool to go for early. I thought that's exactly why they were stealing the pick. What's really cool about this is they win the solo lane, pressure Sonya. But good luck, or sorry, not good luck, Gluck is one step ahead. They are able to take this camp. Um, during realizing the extra pressure from Greymane. And now Sonya knows they're taking the top camp. We'll be able to, t to communicate to the bot lane. Okay, just push the, the towers, use the impalers, grab that cannon tower. I already know he's getting the top camp. 
and you're 4v3 down there. We're in a fantastic position to continue to push this. And basically everything Gluck has done is a little bit faster. Sure, Impalers come top lane too, and it's 2v1 up here, but someone can rotate up. That's right. And Saron is Sonya. He can clear that fairly quickly. And in fact, it's going to be Hanzo who heads up uh, to put the pressure on. They need to be careful about this. Saron's trying to bait this a little bit. Aimer is going to be the target. Walk away. But look at how much more damage Gluck did and how much quicker they did it. I think it was a big win for them. Yep, really not really, not really using the gray main to 100%, I think. They need to really start there. Okay, this one's a little bit now early of a timing, I'm, I think. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's not too bad, but a little bit too early as Gluck, I think they have a better timing on when the Immortal actually spawn. Yeah, you know? it's it's not horrible timing here, mm -hmm. but I think it's I think it's still, you know, it's obviously the right thing to do. We're a few seconds off. I mean, the amount of time between now, this is a more perfect timing from Gluck, but it was still a pretty good timing to take that. It's not going to affect too much. Um, but yeah, the camp of Gluck comes in right as the Immortal spawns, whereas the other one could have been damaged already and is being damaged as we speak from Saron. They get the faster jump onto the Immortal as they well. They can't contest onto the Immortal though, can they? They can't really, not really. Like, their comp is not built to invade, it's built to poke, but they need to be ahead before they get the poke going with the Li Ming and the Grey Main. Okay, this is a good position for Feliz. They can control this defensively while using Li Ming to poke the other one. But Frankel needs to be in position to do that. It looks like he wants to do more damage than actually raise the Immortal. As look at the bot camp versus what Saron's already cleaned that one. That's the timing difference you were talking about, G-Clef. Yep. They've got a Sonya in their comp, so bot camp doing way more. And they're still ahead in the Immortal way race. More, and it was pushed even more, so it's going to do a lot more. So here comes Sonya doing some damage. Does miss the spear, but still Hanaton's very low. Does have to go out with getting some heals. OJ does not get the Dorm cost. I think that was cancelled by Lucio. Okay, Lucio nearly going down here. Does escape. They're going to win the Immortal. Let's not forget, during all of this, not a single death. They need one, or this is going to be horrible. What is Milky Way doing at the front line, Bala? Which is one, one! Aimer oh, almost oh got God. that auto attack, but Sonya's spear actually stopped it. Blue Beetle as well with some oh. really good plays. The Cocktail's going to get a pick and get Please. a reset, but... The bot lane, look at, the, look at that damage onto the fort. Insane damage. They get the Immortal, which is because they're actually trying to get kills so greedily, is already hitting this wall with ranged attacks. Huge win for Gluck. Really good plays by Blue Beetle, uh, by Saren as well, the spear you talked about on the retreat. But all cancelled by a cocktail. And yeah, unfortunately. Please, when there's a Grey Man on the other side, go a little bit, go an extra step, at least like a yard more, maybe like two meters out, and sure. then press that D button. Yeah. <laughs> not, uh, not trying to be too critical of Gluck there, I think uh -huh. that was... G Clubs is talking about your solo cures. I think they would have died no matter what he did in that situation, as long as the cocktail hits the wall. But uh, <laughs> solo cures, yeah, don't back when there's a Grey Main there. You will die. Grey Main's one of my most played heroes, and I will hit you with that. Here's very briefly the first person view <laughs> of Garrosh there. Okay, Overlord's blown up. That's a reset here. They steal the cap. Good rotational play for the first time in a while from Feliz to respond to this. This so Relic is actually going to find himself in trouble too. He's not going to be able to get this. Yeah, Grimmie comes in that Vala. Okay, let's see how they, I they mean, contest. Lucio this Sonya is actually kind of crazy. So Vala set that up from the beginning, I wonder. Aimer actually was too hesitant there. He could have gotten the kill and gotten out, I think. Lost the camp, so actually Impaler is doing damage onto Vala, but Lucio barely healing her. Okay, oh, look at this. Good boop again. Lu under cannon fire here. Regard toss, but the survive with so little HP here. I think that had he been better called out how quickly the rotation was coming, if he wasn't nervous, mm -hmm. Greymane should have been able to get the kill there onto the Vala, didn't get out, but he got nervous, he tried to leave, did escape with his life, but that got a little bit crazy. Really good plays on both sides there, I think, and extra safety is always appreciated from a Greymane player like that, despite the fact that it possibly cost him a kill. Yeah, also got the camp, also stole the camp from, from the Vala, and yeah. so Lee's actually catching up in the XP and actually... Leading for now, but Gluck, if they don't lose that Hanzo, I think that's all where it all started after losing Hanzo. They lacked the member to rotate, so they have to make that play now to see their immortals. So this is again going to be a really good position for Gluck. They can rotate on their side of the map to do damage to this, while Feliz can't really poke very well. Frankel taking a lot of damage, but does get out here. Saron, a little bit of trouble coming through from those slows. 
See, Milky Way is very, very low. He's got that armor, though. OJ gets the cleanse, and that is huge. He should be able to walk away from this one, heal up using his passive, but already the Immortal Race massively in favor of Gluck. Yep, so basically, basically while Garrosh was taking all that damage, the, the back line, the poking, poking lines were damaging all the Immortals from the back line. I think they were, if they had focused a little bit more, maybe they could have started the team fight on their own, but I think they were just focusing on the objective a little more. And you've got, you know, Hanzo, you've got uh, Vala, so that should be your priority is to poke, especially when it's in that position on blue side. Mm -hmm. A little bit tougher now that it's in neutral bottom here. They still have the pokes though, and Blue Beetle makes it so much easier with the Lucio. Okay, trying to get the stuns through here. The poke is working so well for them though. Maybe he's working on the other side. Let's see if they want to make an engage right now. Bala doing some damage from the side. OJ risky. Tons of damage, but actually tosses out. Really risky what Gluck decided to do here. The armor keeping Garrosh alive for the time being. Saron goes down, gets the poison spear damage, but there's just not enough for them to use to get those follow-up kills. Overlord gets one before he tosses himself over the wall. Could they turn this? Pokes coming through, dismounting. But they're also Anahin. low on the mana, especially Vala. Look at least. Doing some CC from the right side, but is that going to be enough? And they are forced out. Not only did they get this, but as the observer showing, the camp was pushing that entire time. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Gluck is a little bit more coordinated, even though their their attack was haphazard there, they had a few mistakes on how they engaged. They just know what to do with the tools they have better, despite all that being low on mana. Knowing how to poke, Feliz not having the ability to jump on them. They have a good poke comp themselves, but even with Go for the Throat now available, they just couldn't get in there and invade to stop that from happening. So, lose bot keep damage on the wall, and now their top board is forfeit. Basically, they, they just, with that immortal, with so much shield, they just gave that one up. And also strafed. I thought they needed a little bit more CC. Maybe they just think Vala will be never in touch if they just continue to fight like this in a way where they can never go to the back line of Bala. This rally just has been having a fun time. Let's see if they can grab onto the back line. Great sound barrier. Huge yep. sound barrier. OJ is caught, but they do get the Ancestral. Saron eating some damage from that keep. We'll need to back away. They have that Lucio healing. I think it's time to turn it into a speed boost and get out of here, though. They got the keep wall, but getting more, I think, is overzealous. They will go ahead and mount up and retreat. OJ looks for the Stormbolt just out of range. Would have been a kill otherwise. So they're going to look to camp here. Sound barrier no longer available, so still a little bit greedy here. OJ misses the bolt. A little too late. Saron can sustain herself from the other side. Milky Way with a really nice Looks angle here. OJ is very low. Let's get the W damage. Who escapes with maybe 2 HP? Yeah, very, very low here. Heals coming through so now. Look at that poison spear damage. Leeming is just out of the fight with that with that one and skill shot. The longer this goes on, Lucio heals better than Rhaegar can. He doesn't even need mana to heal. He just sits around, stands next to his teammates, and the heals come through. And as a result, like the longer that Feliz decides to chase, they mm -hmm. end up getting out healed. And Rhaegar just can't compete with that. Sure, Rhaegar has ancestrally has the burst heals, but in terms of longer sustained fighting, longer healing, Lucio always wins out. And now what looked to be a forced retreat is now Gluck coming back for a second push with this stolen Merc camp to try to eliminate those key hit points. Cocktail finishes here at 10.43, so big power spike now finally for Aimer. Here's the thing, they, even if with Arthas from the side, they have all the pokes. They, as long as they keep in range of their pokes to do some damage, they can always keep control of what's happening because at least they always have to come and defend everything. See how they want to position themselves as they know where it's going to spawn. Yeah, I'm just going to clear this camp down here to try to get that 13 talent to your advantage. Sorry, not camp, uh, wave. Okay, again, this is a great spawn for Gluck. They get to use their uh, close DPS. Look at how quickly Overlord with the stacks that he's got from his level 1 talent can. His attack speed is so quick, he just finished it, actually, his quest. So he's insanely fast attack speed here, the Hanzo. Okay, Zeron, very low, but the sound barrier, again, well-timed here. And now Overlord can look for picks, look for kills. Double stun here, into the mini stun! Huge ancestral on the Frankel, but he's so low, the cleanse isn't gonna save him. And now Gluck on the chase here. This might be the game-winning fight for them. Huge boot coming through for Blue Beetle. It's been great on the Lucio and G-Clef. This may be the beginning of the end. 
And even though they're so low on mana, they can do all the damage. Han Hanathan is just trying to buy time. But that's not gonna matter. They just have so much, so little time. And this one's gonna push all the way into the game. It's gonna be at least the keep, a little bit more. So much shielding, so well played. The Hanzo stun from the Dragon Arrow into the Groundbreaker there. Mm -hmm. Again, Blue Beetle, a hero with the sound barriers, his boops to help secure kills. Understanding when to turn Hanzo from attacking the Immortal to doing poke damage finishes his quest. Obviously, he'll lose those stacks upon death, but will there be another death for Hanzo in this game? I don't think so, given that this Immortal is still so heavily shielded. This should be a push to win. Let's see, just breaking the wall, shield. Quite down from all the poking from Cocktail and Leeming. So that's the thing, if Leeming gets one single kill, they can make some room to actually push in, but that's they're not getting killed, that's why Relic. the sound barrier is so good. Relic Relic taking so, so low. much damage, nice sound barrier. Sound barrier. The timing is so well placed Oh, and the triple time. stun, and look at this, they're just gonna heal up with Lucio. Relic needs to get back to that boom box here to get the heals up. Or they're not gonna be able to win this game off this push like they wanted to. OJ what? gets taunted! Super aggressive play by OJ. We talked about his aggressive door toss as he gets punched this time. Ball is down though. This is Frankel's time to shine with the resets. See, gets the first. Goes all the way in. Saron will be down for sure. Second. Raven goes in, but it's pushed, booped away. But the speed boost will save at least three of them. Blue Beetle wants more here. Immortal's on the core, by the way. This should have been the push to win. But good plays from Feliz. And I think. Relic overextending there was the big problem. He got so low, forced the sound barrier to be used early. He I went down to like 12% health. Didn't actually catch the moment. If he, if he came in or Garrosh actually pulled him in because he was low anyhow. I think that's either either way. That was a dangerous zone to actually be in because you will get, you will be tossed and that cooldown is just back because of that taunt. AoE taunt is such a big yeah. tool when they have all that damage. OJ's overextension there is true as well, but I mean, being that aggressive on the Vala, Relic forced that soundbird to be used early, and sure, they still nearly won the game, but I feel like this was almost a guaranteed win had they played more patiently, given the attack speed of Vala, her Q build here, Hanzo's completed redemption talent at level 1. Core's down to 32%. Feliz, signs of life here as we see a huge arrow. Gonna look to collapse onto this. Taunt is available for Garrosh. Can they get the jump here onto Hanaten? There's the spear. It has to use the ancestral. I don't think it, that's enough. Has to hunt sound that barrier. army. He needs the sound barrier. There it is to save Milky Way. OJ dodges the stun. Oh, 16, 16 level down is so strong, but leaving does get the kill, does get the reset. Can he can get more? That's the question. Out of range here as Overlord is trying to do as much poke as he can. Look at how much damage Overlord can do. It's just too, it's too much to continue further. Very aggressive play by Gluck. Had that second reset come through, whole game is different. They want to invade this because the bot camp is pushing, but just not possible given the flea is already scouted out. Feels so like whenever OJ tosses in, either he wants to go in and the team doesn't, or team is forcing him to go in and he doesn't go, want to go in, but the team says so, so he has to go in. So I feel like every single time he jumps in, it's just not working at the perfect timing. Sure, he's getting punished. Here's another one of those jump ins. He's looking for the kill here. This time it works out. They get those, they get the Hanzo down here. So he's not gonna be able to use those DPS stacks he has in this fight. Got the Immortal down to half health, but that's all they got. Yeah. It's gonna come back in 30 seconds time. Now the bot push with the catapult minions is gonna be pretty helpful here for Gluck to buy that time for Hanzo to respawn. But look at this, they're just getting into position to try to rush this down, buying time, not actually heavily committing. Notice how they just poke a little bit here. Not gonna commit to a larger fight. Not that, until Hanzo's back. Yeah, but that's Hanzo, guys. And also get the, those brothers. Relic, oh, wow. wow. The what? DPS is out of position twice now, and it gets Feliz these wave of force picks. The wave of force into the root there, and then boom, you're done. They can actually make a comeback. This immortal is actually not like too heavily shielded, but it would go to the bottom lane, go into maybe go into the keep wall and try to take things back. Core but is under attack, so haven't quite, uh, you know, solidified their position just yet. Will win the immortal phase, obviously. Gluck's gonna try to get some picks though. If they get any kills, this too could late. just be game over. Into the fray, Lucio, so he, Lucio does survive. So about one third shields. Mm -hmm. uh, aiming did go clear the bot lane. So they're gonna have um, 
If they actually go all the way into the cave and destroy the cave, it's going to help them immensely because they will have that catapult helping to even out the bottom lane. Yeah, Aimer killed the killed the push, so this comes through. They're going to try to as much as they can with this mortal. No kills, unfortunately, onto Glug, so Glug has, they have the Hanzo they can poke behind the wall with. They have Vala to slow us down, but again, not long range poke, not super great wave here to stop an immortal push. Uh -huh. Not the siege they were looking for, just having to use these scatter arrows as best as they can. Look at that <laughs> cocktail damage, meanwhile. <laughs> oh, man. Like 50% off everybody? Oh, man. This mortal's actually doing a lot of work, though. Definitely going into the keep. I think they're looking for the keep with the, all these pokes coming in. And look at their line pushing in along with the immortal. Okay, a sound barrier is going to have to be the way to engage this if they want to save it. I think they've already given up that concept here. OJ getting very low, but he can just walk away and heal. Saron eats that sound barrier. Taunt comes through, but the Ancestral does match it. Police could win this game right now if they do it right. There's the first pick here. And now Lee Ming, Lee Ming gets a second. The Green Ming is going for the kill on to Sonya even more. I think. They did lose Arthur, Franco. but I think going for Franco the win. wins the game. Franco wins the game for them. No mana left, but it doesn't matter. They got the kills they needed the last second. One immortal phase is all it takes. Hot and so. the DPS positioning here for Gluck. Oh, Hot so goes down. But the, the, the DPS <laughs> positioning for uh, Gluck cost them this game. Man, our, if they position oh, correctly, oh, they should our, be able to win this. <laughs> yes. They should be able to we, win we this. We switched to if <laughs> right after, but it's going to be enough for sure. They do have four members. Yeah, they're going down to 30, below 30. OJ alone can finish this, and he's not alone, so. <laughs> there you go. We're going to a game five. Please, with that team fight there, uh, we'll bring it back. All on Frankel, the carry of that fight. Aimer sets up the push, clears the bot wave. They have the immortal that they won there. From the picks they got onto Relic, who again finds himself dying first in these team fights. Relic gonna be very frustrated if they end up losing this series. I think a lot of the burden will certainly be on him. So Hanzo, so so far, having a 25% win rate in HEC. Yeah, not the greatest. Uh-huh, one out of four. Let's see. Well, then, it's going to change. I wonder how how different uh, other regions will be on picking, how highly they'll be picking Hanzo into the draft. Look at Relic's face. He knows it was his fault. Getting out of position multiple times there and just finding himself knocked by Wave of Force. Like, Frankel, MVP, 100%. Wave of Force is knocking him out of position, and he's just blown up by the combos that followed. When you're Vala, I understand the idea to be greedy to do as much damage as possible with mm -hmm. your Q and get in there and get those auto attacks to win the Immortal race, but when you get into range of those Wave of Forces, the Arthas Howling Blast, then, you know, you die. And he died several times as a result. Yeah, exactly. I just noticed that we have a screen behind us. It's been there the whole time. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs>